I would now like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Keith Hill, President and CEO. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm here. Uh, this is Keith Hill. I'm here with Nick Walker, our COO, and Ian Gibbs, our CFO. And uh, as we talked about last time, I think we're going to try to make this a standard policy to kind of have conference calls associated with our more significant press releases. Um, I would point out that uh, if those of you that are near a computer, uh, if you log on to our website, there's a, a figure that uh, I would I would like to refer to on the uh, uh, which will come up right on the home page. Uh, for those that aren't near a computer, I'll, I'll tell you what's in there. But uh, obviously, the most the reason for this call is primarily just to talk about the uh, uh, the resource update that we've uh, just released. I think we're uh, quite happy with the overall percentage increase over the uh, previous year. Uh, for those of you looking at the chart, you'll see that we've grown from in 2012 from a, a total of uh, 56 uh, million barrels of 2C and 70 million of 3C for a, a total uh, uh, of 126 million barrels. Uh, in, in 2013, we uh, raised that uh, um, uh, now on three fields from three, uh, 368 million uh, uh, gross contingent resources, uh, 3C, to uh, 851 million. Um, and then this year we've gone up from 616 2C contingent resources um, to 1.29 billion uh, 3C contingent resources. So an increase of 67% of 2C, uh, an increase of 52% of 3C, you know, obviously adding in more fields and now having seven fields. I think uh, in general we're quite happy with these uh, numbers, particularly the 3C number. I think. Uh, um, we, were, we were pushing our reserve auditors a bit more on the 2C number. I think uh, our internal number is uh, significantly higher than that, but we understand from a reserve auditor's standpoint that we may have to demonstrate a little bit more uh, progress before they reclassify some of the uh, 3C numbers into 2C numbers. And I think we have a very good program over the next six months to a year, drilling appraisal well, doing extended well tests, doing uh, extensive core analysis that we hope will... Uh, um, uh, drive that forward. I will say that these numbers are only for the uh, seven fields uh, that were included in the in the study. They don't include any of the uh, prospective resources in the Lokachar Basin um, uh, of undrilled prospects, uh, which we are just spud the uh, Kosa on, and uh, we'll we'll uh, um, very likely drill the northern Etom prospects in the coming year. Uh, they also are primarily only in the uh, where we're sandstone reservoir. Um, there are a few, there's a very minor amount in the Lacone Sands within the Lacone Shale, uh, but we do have a number of other reservoirs that really haven't been addressed uh, or currently considered uh, uneconomic. Um, we will be uh, addressing those uh, in an overall resource update sometime towards the end of the year, probably coming out sometime in the first quarter, uh, which will um, uh, incorporate a lot of the uh, Core data, core analysis that we're doing uh, should have the early results of the extended well test, and we'll also have a number of uh, other wells we'll be drilling, including the Kosowan, uh, the appra some of the appraisal wells on Amasing in particular, where we see a, a chance for a lot of reserve growth, and then of course the basin opening wells. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, at least three of those done likely before we uh, um, issue a, uh, an updated resource update on on, on that. So I think uh, in general, uh, as I said, we're pleased. I think we see a significant growth. I think we'll continue to see that significant growth. And I think the most important thing for us is that we now feel very confident that we've got uh, threshold volumes to uh, proceed with the uh, development. I think the only other thing just to bring to the uh, attention of the, uh, the listeners is that we have now spud to what we consider high impact wells. So the Kosawan is drilling. That's the southernmost string of pearl prospects and very close to the Gamia and Amasing wells where we found our thickest best pay and you can see it in the body of the report that uh, encompasses over 70% of our uh, um, contingent resources. So uh, that, that'll be a high impact well. And then we also have spud the Kodos well in the uh, central Cario Basin, uh, which is uh, a basin opening well in the, in the basin that appears to be geologically most similar and, and is more most proximal to the uh, um, Lokachar Basin. So um, that's really all I wanted to say in the introduction. I think uh, we just want to open the questions and uh, I'm happy to uh, field questions from the audience at this time. Thank you.
we will now take questions from the telephone lines. If you have a question and are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before making your selection. If you have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. You may at all times cancel your question by pressing the pound key. Please press star 1 now if you have a question. There will be a brief pause while participants register. Thank you for your patience. Our first question is from Michael Alsford from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Um, hi, Keith. Good afternoon. Just a quick question on, on your comment in the release where you sort of talk about uh, your confidence on, on maybe seeing a recovery factor that's at the upper end of the current range, which is, I guess, 16% to 36%. Um, could you maybe just talk a little bit around, I guess, why you're confident that we should see a recovery, recovery factor on the, on the upper end of that range? And I guess w what you think needs to be done to, to get the auditors over the line you know, with that view too. Thanks. Yeah, M Michael, it's uh, Nick Walker here. I I'll, I'll attempt to answer that for you. I mean, yeah, we, we put in the press release the, the range of recovery factors, uh, you know, 26% uh, P50 and 36% uh, uh, P10. Um, you know, when you look at the quality of the rock that we have here in the Awurwa, uh, we've, uh, we've got, uh, you know, hundreds of millidarsies to darsies uh, quality rock. Uh, and, and what we've been able to demonstrate in the, uh, the, the appraisal program so far that, uh, that we have uh, not only a sand continuity but also pressure continuity uh, between the, the wells that we've been drilling on a spacing that's broader than the spacing that we would develop this with. So uh, when we get down to development, we should be uh, comfortable that we're going to have a good connectivity be, uh, between a, an injector-producer pair and with this quality of rock, we should be able to get high recovery factors. I think that's one aspect. The second aspect is when you look at analog reservoirs and when we look at a database of analog reservoirs of similar type uh, of reservoir quality, uh, what you see is that the recovery factor range is somewhat higher than the, the range that, uh, that we've been able to convince Gaffney Klein on. And, and so uh, we would expect uh, you know, similar types of reservoirs to so places like Rajasthan, uh, 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 Sudan, uh, has reservoirs in the 30s uh, in, percent, in, uh, and we should be able to see ourselves move towards that. You know, as a petroleum engineer myself, I, I, you know, these types of reservoirs you would expect sort of 35-ish percent uh, recovery factor. And, and so what we need to do to, to get there is we're going to do some uh, extended well tests at, uh, in Gamia uh, and uh, Amasing. I think the additional appraisal wells that we'll drill, which will, uh, you know, hopefully demonstrate and continue to demonstrate connectivity uh, uh, between the wells, and I think our special core analysis, uh, part of which is, uh, will be focused on understanding uh, 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 the, the relative permeability effects in the reservoir, which also will help uh, solidify this. So all of those things, I think, will come together over the next six to nine months. And, and I'm hopeful that, that, you know, seeing positive results out of that, then we'll be able to convince our auditor that, that we move from current levels uh, uh, further upwards. But uh, I think it's also narrowing the range, which is important as well, not just lifting it. And so hopefully that okay. answers your, your question, Michael. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, just it just really, I guess. So, so, so when you've had a discussion with Kathleen Klein, are they essentially saying that we need to see, um, you know? Test data from 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 extended well test, you know, that that's the kind of the key missing point, as well as obviously further work on the core analysis. So it's really, uh, I'm assuming, you know, when you it, finish those, it's all of those things. Be, yeah, it's all of those things. Most extended well test, it's the it's further appraisal drilling. It's actually 3D. It's uh, and it's the special core analysis. And I think, you know, they they just a bit nervous about they they've been conservative, and I think they just want to see that before we do it. And of course. We've got a big program of activity, uh, and we laid out some of that in the in, in the release. Uh, that you'll see a significant amount of that happen over over the next six to nine months. And I think with good results from that, I think we were able to, uh, to 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 sort of narrow this range uh, and move, you know, hopefully move a con considerable portion of our 3C into 2C resources. Yeah, and it should be pointed out that it's not just recovery factor. I mean, there. There are issues around porosity, saturation of water, and probably one of the most important ones is area. You know, they until we drill some uh, appraisal wells in some of the untapped areas of these fields, 
uh, we're not going to get credit for that area. So there's a number of factors that we can go after to try to build uh, um, contingent resources. Great. Okay. No, thanks to you both. Okay. Thank you. The following question is from David Mirzai from Society General. Please go ahead. Hi, afternoon, gents. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, just firstly, um, so the, the drilling results we've seen today, I, I know talking to clients today, they're, they're wondering how um, Palo came out with a, an, an estimate of above 600 million barrels at the start of this year, and they haven't really seen much growth this year. Um, they've seen some mixed drilling results. Uh, and I suppose I, I, I really want to ask um, what's behind um, some, some of those mixed drilling results and, and how can we kind of um, ensure or how can we risk um, those drilling results going forward in, in other fields? Uh, just to give you a, a, an example, I did notice that the, the 2C number on Twigger went down. So, so just trying to understand the reasons why that number went down and, and if other discoveries are at risk. Yeah, I mean, since the beginning of the year, the only new fields we've really drilled that are on this list is EY. Which is, is is a fairly small volume add. You know that one I think was a little disappointing, as was Acuna. You know on that other side of the basin, we we haven't been adding as much reserves as we ought, we we'd like. In fact, in Atuco, if you remember last year, we had 100 million barrels in Atuco, so we lost quite a bit on sort of the eastern side of the basin. So again, we think there's a lot of oil in place there. The reservoirs are not quite as good a quality. Um, they have calcite cement in them, so we're going to try things like acidizing, fracking, and maybe horizontal wells to kind of unlock that oil. So we think there's a lot of upside on that side of the basin. I think on Twiga, you know, one of the reasons we lost some uh, volume on Twiga was when we did, drilled the first most updip uh, appraisal well, we found this basinal face, this uh, this this uh, uh, alluvial fan face, uh, which is is poor or non-reservoir, and so some of the updip uh, um, potential uh, was was uh, lost in, in the Twiga field. Uh, I think the, uh, you know, the big ad uh, this year, and I think the big ad you're going to see next year is Amasing. You know, Amasing has a very similar thickness and size uh, to Gamia. In fact, we've now pushed down the oil water contact where we can't close it off from Ecosuan. So I think we see that southern area of the String of Pearls to be uh, really the, 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 the sweet spot in the basin. And I think you'll see a lot of activity there. But Twiga, Agente, Ecalis, uh, and even Etom, which didn't have a lot of pay thickness, had a lot of reservoir thickness, you know, we still see a lot of potential in those, and I think we, we will see reserve growth in there. I think that where we lost reserves and where we disappointed is more over on the uh, eastern side of the basin. Certainly. And um, in in terms of the the appraisal uh, program going forward, how how necessary is 3D seismic um, to that program, given some of the results you've had today? And and will the drilling program be held up whilst you're collecting, whilst you're processing seismic um, over these areas? Well, I think the main thing in the 3D is that we, we should be able to map the reservoir, the faults, with a lot more confidence. I think. You know, particularly in Etom, where we just drilled that well, where it looks like we have faults that we didn't, we, we the well went through faults that we didn't see on the seismic, uh, and in fact we had wet sand below where we went through. Believe we went through some of the faults. It does look like that structure is more complicated, and I think we may need 3D to unravel it. The other thing is, uh, again, these reservoir facies. We're, we are hopeful that, um, you know, we have the, the good of where we're facies. We have this basinal facies, which seems to be a dimming on the 2D seismic. Um, you know, our, our, our ultimately, we would love to be able to map reservoir facies with confidence. I think, you know, until we've got the final processing, until we've really matched it up with the rel well results, we won't be able to tell that. But um, I think we will we will stop our drilling in the northern part of the uh, uh, basin until we've got the 3D and feel more confident. Because, you know, uh, right now, if we tried to appraise ETOM, I think we'd be sort of drilling in the dark. And I think we need to see that 3D. But... In general, down in the south, um, the structure that we got around Amasing on 3D seemed very similar to what we saw on 2D, just a little more detailed. But I think it is going to be a, a, a useful tool. Because um, uh, we did see at Gamia 2 that there are different fault blocks in the Gamia field. So I think we have to be able to map those with confidence to accurately assess reserves. 
I think it's also worth just pointing out where we are on the 3D. So uh, we will finish the base program that we agreed to do, uh, uh, which goes extends up past uh, uh, Gete by the end of October. We're already just about to get the process volume across in Gamia. And then we will have finished the entire program over in terms of shooting it by the end of the year, and I guess processing will go two or three months into the following year. So, you know, we're going to have bulk of this data very, very soon, and we've got it over the key fields, and we're continuing to drill and, uh, and pick locations. So it's not slowing us down and not having it at the moment. Okay, and um, so your your next reserve report should we expect that in as you say six to nine months' time, or, or will that be uh, prepared for the year end? Uh, in which case, what additional drilling can we expect to see by between here and the end of the year? I think I think it'll be more time to uh, to to get as much information as we can. So we will have the basin openers, obviously, which will be an important one. You know, we really haven't done any. Uh, resources in the uh, Cario Basin. It was not included last year because we didn't have the seismic. So obviously that we'd, we'd want to wait to see the results of the Kodos well. Uh, uh, as far as the uh, appraisal drilling and uh, Ecosawan, we'll, we'll have the results of those as well. And then the extended well test is one of the more important ones. Um, so we, we would ideally like to wait and uh, get the results of the extended well test. But I think from a timing standpoint, uh, we will just time that, that it's the best report we can come up with uh, the most information and if we have to delay a month or two to get that information incorporated and get a better picture of what the reserves are, I think we will. But my guess is it would be out sometime in the first quarter. Just looking at that, um, you know, all of the things we've got coming to a head will be mostly in the first quarter of next year and uh, we should be able to incorporate that data as we go. Great. And uh, just lastly, I'm um, sorry, uh, can't leave without a question, just in terms of your, your drilling commitments this year, and, and just what are, what are the um, the contractual rules around um, funding your, your drilling for next year? Uh, do you have to have the funding in place uh, ahead of signing these contracts, and how does that really um, uh, affect your, your discussions at the moment? No, I mean, the, the drilling contracts are all signed, and we have funding to see us all the way through the middle of next year, and uh, uh, we don't have any concern about uh, raising more money if we need it next year. Uh, but certainly we'd like to drill the basin opener and do it, uh, do it and raise any additional funds on, on the back of good news and hopefully above where we raised it last time. Perfect. Thank you very much, Gent. Thank you. The following question is from Nick Copeman from GLG. Please go ahead. Hey guys, just had uh, two questions on uh, Amasing and Ekaswan area. Uh, one was on Amasing and how the oil in place has been calculated by the reserve auditor. Uh, and I'm really asking that as you've got all the wells drilled in, a, in one area of the field and it looks like it extends a decent distance. Uh, and then the other thing on Ekaswan was uh, have you got seismic lines that run from Ekaswan across to Amasing? And uh, how does that fault you've drawn on the diagram here? How clear is that? And how is it obvious you've got a throw on it or not? If you give any color around that, would be great. Thanks. Yeah, I think the Amasing well, they're all drilled in a straight line, basically. And we actually drilled them fairly close together, uh, particularly the uh, side track of Amasing 2, because we wanted them close for our extended well test. Now you want you want to be able to see the interference between those wells, and if we put them too far apart, it could take months before you started seeing the effects. So I, I think the biggest difference between Amasing and Gamia is not really the field size itself. It, it's it's how much of the area that is being given to us by our reserve auditors. We do have 3D over the whole area now. We have received the processing over Amasing, and we do not see anything on the 2D or the 3D that shows a significant uh, barrier between uh, um, Ecosawan or Amazon. So we will have the Acosta well, one well is drilling right now. I mean, one of the obviously we'll, we'll look to see if the oil, the reservoirs are filled with oil first. The second thing we'll look yep. to see is that uh, the pressure gradient in the uh, Acosta one well, uh, whether it kind of lines up with the uh, pressure yep. gradient we've seen. In the but, uh, hey, you draw a fault on the uh, on the slide on page eight. Do you see a significant throw on that, which would cause you to think the reservoirs are unconnected, or is it just a if you look up near the fault, you know, near the basin bounding fault, there is 
throw on it there, but it dissipates as you move down. By the time we get to the where the proven spill point is today, um, there is very little, if, if any, offset on that fault. So it doesn't appear like it should be, you know, and, and given the fact we have, you know, a couple hundred meters of sand uh, juxtaposed against each other, it, it doesn't seem likely that could be a ceiling fault. But again, until we drill the wells, if we if we yeah, see no, a constant have prospect, then we'll go down dip and probably uh, kind of towards that fault. We'll, we'll probably head pretty much straight north on our Acosa well and appraisal well. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we'll certainly gain some insight at that. You know, you know, there, yeah. there's got to be some barrier somewhere. If you if you follow that whole basin around, you'll eventually hit the uh, Ikunyik well on the other side of the basin. So somewhere between there and between uh, Amasing, there is a barrier. But uh, so far on the 3D, we've seen nothing that looks obvious. Uh, you know, I think, yeah. Nick, the other point to make is that quite a bit of the structure, the, the map structure that we would count as Amasing, as in prospective resource. So we've been basically given a very s small area around the existing wells which we've got in contingent here. And of course we haven't re released our, uh, our prospective resources, we're still working that. Uh, and, and so there's much more to this than, uh, than we've got in the resource report here. Have you got uh, prospective resources on Echos one yet? Um, no, just the old ones we heard from before. So they they haven't been updated. And you've got 3D across X1 as well, haven't you? We do. Yeah. Okay. And there's a map okay. in the course of the presentation on that. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Our last question is from Jamie Maddock from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hello, guys. Thank you for taking my call. Um, just a quick one. How do you think about the, the different risks within these new basins? So I'm just trying to think about how you think about laterally, whether we should think of the Kerio as a similar risk profile to North Lokachar. Um, and then, I guess, following on from that, is, to, to what extent have you been able to de-risk either of those basins in advance of you drilling those wells? Thank you. Yeah, I think you've hit right at the heart of things on that uh, question, uh, Jamie. I mean, the... Uh, it's all about source rocks, in my opinion. You know, as a geologist, uh, I think the, the big single risk we have in these basins is source rock. As we painfully learned in the uh, Chubahar Basin, which doesn't appear to have a, a good source rock like the uh, South Lokachar Basin is. I think there's, there's a series of basins very near the Lokachar Basin that we're getting ready to drill, including the Cario Basin, the uh, North Lokachar Basin, the, the North Cario Basin, that all seem very genetically similar and probably formed roughly at the same time as the Lokachar Basin. I mean, our, our feeling is that they have a, a similar geologic history. They should have a very good chance of finding source rocks. And in fact, the South Cario Basin, one reason, South and Central Cario Basin, one of the reasons we like that is there is source rock and outcrop right nearby that, er that area that is the same Miocene source rock that we see in the, uh, in the South Lokachar Basin. Um, but, you know, you have to drill a well to find out. You know, the, uh, at the end of the day, we, we see a seismic package that looks a lot like the Lacone source rock, but... Um, we need to drill wells to, to confirm that. You know, normally one of the things you like to see is an oil seep. Uh, oil seeps are probably the best single indication that there is a, a source rock working. And uh, we have seen that in some places, like uh, Lake Tracana, there are surface seeps. Uh, in fact, we drilled just across the border in Ethiopia and saw some oil shows in the uh, uh, the Sabisa well that uh, you know give us confidence that there is source rock in the Tracana Basin. Um, the, the Abaya Basin uh, up in the Ethiopia, we also see a number of seeps up there, which also gives us some confidence on source rocks. You know, the problem with finding seeps in most of our portfolio is that uh, the water table is 150 meters below the, the ground level. So even if oil was seeping up out of the basin, it can't seep to the surface. It can only seep to the top of the water table. So uh, we don't see active seeps. Um, you know, like they did in Lake Albert. Out Lake Albert, uh, because it's a lake, and which is somewhat by definition coincident with the water table, uh, you're able to see seeps there. So um, geologically, we believe that there's a very high chance that we will have uh, seeps there, but I, or that we will have a source rock there, but uh, well, we need to drill the wells to uh, confirm the petroleum system. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There are no following questions registered at this time. I would like to return the meeting to Mr. Hill. All right, well, thanks for calling in. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, we will continue to see resources uh, grow over this time. I think the other thing in the next six months we 
are very uh, hopeful to see is a, a little bit more clarity on the development. Um, you know, the pipeline is uh, progressing well. The discussions between the Uganda government, the Kenyan government, and the Uganda joint venture and the Kenyan joint venture, and uh, we would hope that within six months' time we will have settled the, the routing and the commercial structure, which is really one of the key uh, um, facets to uh, turning these uh, prospective resources there's, uh, and contingent resources into proven and probable reserves. We'll also be, the other big component of that is a development plan. We will be putting together a draft development plan with the hope of sub submitting that to the government in the second half of next year. And uh, of course, the, the biggest driver for our stock and for our company are these basin opening wells. Every new basin we open has the, uh, the chance to increase the uh, share price as much as the Lokachar Basin has increased it in the past. So uh, thanks everyone for calling in. I think the next news release is probably going to be uh, of significance is probably going to be at the end of uh, October which, uh, or early November when we would expect the results of the Ecosa One and the uh, Kodos drilling program. So uh, very likely that's when we would uh, be holding the next conference call. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. That concludes today's conference call. Please disconnect your lines at this time and we thank you for your participation.